Oh, how, how appealing is our, our lovely band hero? I think they did great with his um, very muscular uh, aesthetic <laughs> here. And, um, <laughs> and his yeah. pose is just more interesting. Like, it is, isn't it? Yeah. Like, I'm just kind of standing there like I'm about to swing or uh, kind of <laughs> maneuvering something. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like I admire all my figures when I do my dusting routine because I get <laughs> right up in there. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Golden Deer was my first route. And I still need oh, to do the choice. DLC. I have the DLC. I just haven't done the fourth route. <laughs> same as, same as. And I've got an excuse though because after I completed his route, I lent the game cartridge to my niece. I think she lost it, so I need to find oh, it. No. <laughs> I need to find it. Um, I know Taylor, the gaming shelf, will be absolutely envious, green with envy of this one, but uh, it's the Arabian um, Risa from Persona. Persona, maybe this, this image is better. Ah. Uh, Persona 4. Oh, she so looks awesome. She is highly, highly sought after, and I think now oh, the yeah. cheapest you're going to find her for is about 70,000 70, yen. So oh, quite, wow. That's quite steep, pricey. Yeah. Hey everyone, welcome to the Miyazaki Man podcast. I think you're really going to enjoy this episode. Emily was absolutely lovely and fantastic. New style format, we're actually going to rate some Fire Emblem figurines that we both have in our collection. We've got different criteria like visual appeal, character likeliness, sculpt, paint job. You're going to really enjoy it, I think. Speaking of which, we've got a new development underway. I have a new development underway that allows you to look at your favorite creators all in one place, showing the latest video that they released, the most popular video they ever had, and also behind the scenes close-ups for all of their favorite stuff, like favorite animes, top waifus, top husbandos, favorite figures, also all of their social media accounts all in one place, exclusive interviews, exclusive galleries, exclusive content right here on msinevitable.com. As I mentioned, all your favorite creators and my buddies all in one place. If you'd like to be involved in this particular project, get in touch and let me know and I will get your name on the list. It's still a work in progress, but I'm working on building my own collection site as well, showcasing my hundreds and hundreds of figurines, war scroll tapestry, music boxes, acrylic stands, clothes and accessories, and all the goodies from Japan. Each article will have exclusive pictures and photography, as well as a rating system all for every item. Keep an eye on it. Me and Emily's review is coming very soon for the Fire Emblem figures. Without further ado, let's get on with the show. Remember to like and subscribe and share to your heart's content. Hey everyone, welcome back to the Miyazaki Band podcast. I'm delighted to be joined by Orbalology. Emily, how are you doing? Great. How are you doing? Yeah, no, very good, very good, thank you. And I'm, I'm really glad to have you on the show because finally someone that can uh, mix both of my passions, video games and figure collecting. <laughs> Yay. Uh, brilliant, brilliant. Yeah, so figure collecting is a little new for me, but it's been something I've been diving more into and I'm really excited about it. Absolutely, it's, it's dangerous, it's exciting. It's, the whole world has opened up now. <laughs> yeah, it's <laughs> very much <laughs> starting to dive down into that rabbit hole. <laughs> I know, I know what you mean. Speaking of, of rabbit holes, I mean, the rabbit kind of craze for figurines is through the roof at the moment, you know, with the bunny figures and whatnot. <laughs> there are, yeah. Luckily, there hasn't been any temptations on the bunny figures for me yet, but I, I feel like once an yeah. IP rolls around, uh, I'll have to give in. <laughs> Absolutely, absolutely. And that's a whole, whole new can of worms, but especially because, you know, new to the kind of collecting scene. So how did you make the decision on which figures to, to purchase first and foremost for your collection? Um, I guess my story is not that interesting. They are making, or Cody, uh, Cody Bukia was making the Trails figures, and that's one of my favorite mm. RPG series. And that's kind of what spurred me because they're a pretty good price point. Altina came out first. Um, and so I was like, okay, I could do this. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Start getting yeah. to ease into figure collecting. But then after her and Dreen, and then I bought a Ryza one, it just went downhill mm. from there. <laughs> Exactly, yeah, exactly. I know what you mean. And actually, it's really fortunate because I would say that a lot of the um, game oriented figures and the RPG ones, the sculpts and designs are really nice. They haven't, you know, cut any corners. They've come out well. Yeah, I've been really pleased, especially the ones I've picked up so far. Like some of the Kotobukiya ones from Trails, like early on, were a little, I guess, more basic than some of the, for example, Xenoblade, Good Smile ones. Sure. 
Um, and some of the Fire Emblem ones have been really top notch. That's true. That is very true. Yeah. And you get a mixture of kind of price points as well, because that mm -hmm. new Xenoblade Nia that came out, I know uh, <laughs> you're very excited with that one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I just got her last week and she's beautiful. Uh, most, my most expensive mm -hmm. figure, I think, to date in terms of um, MSRP. Yeah, that's true. That's true. And speaking of which, you know, me and you share very similar kind of um, interest in terms of, of the game figurines, because today we're actually going to be comparing side by side and giving a kind of realistic, unbiased, it's going to be totally biased, but review of the, of the figurines. <laughs> so that should be fun. That's yeah. Fun. So speaking of um, the first one we'll get into, so Fire Emblem, obviously the Fire Emblem range is actually really good value for money, I'd say, because for the detail and the quality and the characters that you get, they're really affordable, aren't they? Definitely. I think especially the first few they came out with, um, I would say the prices of like the recent pre-orders are up there now, but I think that's just the state of the figure collecting, like in general. But, that's true. Yeah. That is true. There was a bit of controversy that, uh, especially when Roy and Lelina came out, the ones after yes. Byleth, there's a huge jump from the Byleth price point, which is around 16,000 yen to Lelina and Roy, high 20s. Yeah, almost, yeah, 30,000 almost. Um, yeah, I actually didn't pre-order them because I think they were a Good Smile exclusive and so there wasn't any yeah. discounts and I was like, Ugh. Sure. And I, I <laughs> you thought they fit in. together kind of funny. They had that like weird pizza slice missing yeah, no. in the middle of it's their true. face. <laughs> so I was like, I don't know that how is... I feel about them. And um, those are the games I haven't played because I don't think Roy's game was oh. localized. So One day, so one day. Game. I think with the Fire Emblem hype that they might, might remake them or might remaster them, but yeah. Fingers crossed. <laughs> I think slowly they're going to be doing it. We'll see. Yeah, they will. They will for sure. And I, like, I reckon it was a missed opportunity because obviously Rory and Lelina go together. Why don't they make some kind of combined base? You know, if you buy both of them, you can put them together. That would have been so nice. I was yeah thinking about that like pizza slice that was just um, in the back there. They're going to have a third figure to like slide in there, but I didn't know who that would have been. <laughs> but yeah, it seems true, a little true. odd like that, what they did. Oh, I think um, when they were doing their... Um, the prototype or you know the uh, marketing photos they had like a mm. very like solid base that looked like it was just a carpet but then when you kind of look yeah. closer like wait something's missing here <laughs> so I, I don't know i thought <laughs> that was totally kind right. of weird you had to like cycle through food photos to see what that their actual base looked like <laughs> Yeah, no, no, I completely agree. Completely agree with you. And actually, just thinking of who could go with those two figurines, there's a big lack of husbandos in the kind of figure uh, industry. And like Big Daddy Hector or Eligard, Eliwood, sorry, they would go nicely. <laughs> oh, yeah, like I mean, be, like towering over them too. That's, I think that would be perfect. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. At least we have day, Ike, one... though. Ike is the big, true. big muscular one. That's true. So far. Yeah, and that was an interesting one as well because Ike has the that little side base that slots in next to him to hold up. That massive cape, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I would say I kind of... Part of me, like, I don't usually like, you know, those, like, um, I guess being new to the figure community, I've had to understand the support rods and, the, like, the need for mm. them, but leaning and everything. And I do kind of sure. appreciate how they kind of hid his in the base, um, even though it was, it was kind of something you slide in. Whereas yeah. um, like the Neo figure I just got, um, it was just two little clear rods that you put in the back. Transparency, not yeah, the, that you can yeah, see and open. Not attach the base at all. <laughs> so I guess you have your trade off. <laughs> exactly, design decisions. Yeah, I know what you mean. Sometimes it can be a pet peeve because sometimes you really look out for a figure that's you know long awaited so beautiful really well sculpted and then you've got these transparent rods that are just so visible and it's like oh yeah. why why did you have to do it and start and leaving they're the metal it. rods too like uh, my pyra has yeah. one but hers is in the back so it's a little bit more discreet i feel like then um that's i don't true. know if you like mithra's she had the upfront clear rod but or support that is true that is true depending on where the the overlay kind of hangs and where it's going to slide in if they can put it in the back like a cape that'd be really nice but sometimes mm -hmm. you can't avoid a, a front facing pose <laughs> it's true and speaking of which the first figure of the day um now this one let's go with with lynn lynn to start off with so i am very very fond of of the whole whole figure and and sculpt and what i was really surprised with her was she bargain bin straight away. Did you see her in the aftermarket? Like the price? Yeah, went... she totally tanked. Um, I was surprised too. She had, I don't know if your figure was like this. Mine had a little bit of um, some defects like in the paint. Um, so oh. maybe that was why. 
Uh, she was a little bit sloppy. Wonder, like yeah. it was right under, like around her stomach. Like I had some weird bumps. You you are right. I've never noticed this before, but there's a little white little white streak just there on on the belt oh on, my on the God. red belt as well. So it's a... oh, I didn't have the streak, but yeah, like the the blue, I, it was like kind of rough. Yeah, the blue for me seems fairly fairly okay. But now that you're saying this, on her boot, there's a little bit of paint leakage of of some kind of brown coloring, and then on that sash, there's a little bit of a, a white staining. So it's very. Um, I wouldn't have noticed it until I looked up close. So this is a <laughs> great opportunity to do the review here. But one thing I did like about this figure was the shading of the green in the hair is very, very nice. Like they've got the different kind of highlights of the lime green in, mixed in with the dark green. I love, I love green. So <laughs> I, I, I love how they use the green both in her hair and the base. Yeah, yeah, aesthetically is, is quite pleasing. So I guess we should um, go with the, the first criteria. So visually appealing. How, how much would you rate this out of five? So stacked on your shelf, up close, how visually appealing is, is Lynn out of five? And you can say 0.5 as well. You can say okay. half. Uh, I would go with 4.5. I really like her pose. Um, it's very dynamic. And it's, That's true. you could see like the wind kind of, you know, uh, movement with her hair and her outfit. Um, and the kind of plain base is very fitting for her character too. Yeah, yeah, I I would very much lean towards that. So I think the attention to detail they've given her, and even when you look at different areas, for example, the muscular denture on her kind of legs and thighs and the creasing in, in the kind of dress. And as you mentioned, the wind aesthetic flowing in the wind, the, the aesthetic base and the color palette as well. I mean, I know you've got to stick with the character's color palette, but she's really, really pleasing from, from afar. And you know straight away, right? Yeah, she sticks out on the shelf, for sure. <laughs> Cool, cool. I'm going to agree with you. 4.5. So we're very evenly matched there. And in terms of character likeliness, so we've kind of touched on this a little bit, but uh, character likeliness, how well did they capture Lynn out of five? I think they did a good job. Um, because it is, she was from like a Game Boy era. Um, and I, I'm not too familiar with um, the heroes, kind of her artwork mm. and other, um, you know, applications that they've done over the sure. years. But um, overall, I think they did a really good job. Um, can I say 4.75? <laughs> yeah, we're getting very, very active Okay, it's there, hard so. for me to get fives out. <laughs> but I think I know, they did a good job. I know job. what you mean. Because I, I really like her face. It looks really great. Especially the eyes. It's... it's that is completely true. The eyes are visually stunning. It's kind of emerald, mm -hmm. kind of green. She looks quite happy. Um, she's very kind of spunky and spontaneous. You know what? I don't. I rarely give fives as well, but that is so Lynn. There's no yeah, one else that could possibly be. So I'm going to give that. Her just joy. I love it. <laughs> yeah, she's a happy, happy girl. I'm going to give it a five. Why not? That, <laughs> that is so Lynn. <laughs> They've captured Lynn completely. So in terms of like character likeliness, that is a five. But what about the sculpt job? Are you happy with how they sculpted her? Um, I do have complaints about um, the, the scabbard that always falls off for me. <laughs> I don't know. Well, on her sword, on her hip there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Whenever I'm dusting, hip. it always falls off. I'm like, uh. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I haven't got that problem yet. So uh, a little bit, a little bit fortunate in that regard. But it took me forever to yeah, put it so in. Overall, too. as a sculpt. But yeah, overall, the sculpt, I, I, again, I, I love her pose. And um, the thing that they did with her arm or her, her, um, her, uh, wrist like shifting to get yeah. the sword fit i thought that was kind of neat <laughs> she was one of my oh, first figures <laughs> so it was kind of cool to put her together i was really afraid i was gonna snap something <laughs> yeah that's very very true and it's very very subtle as well i like how she's just yeah. um yeah. kind of caressing that blade on on the end of her arm there it's very very yeah. kind of dynamic and very you know it's yeah, not her, the kind of standard her hair kind of hugs there, it right? too yeah you're right right that is is quite impressive i'm noticing more and more things as you're mentioning them because um <laughs> i open them up i stack them up and I, i'm afraid to say i haven't done as much in-depth analysis as i really would have liked to but now looking at this i i am quite impressed with the sculpts i would be very happy to give this a 4.5 for sculpt what about mm -hmm. yourself i'll agree with that one yeah um 4.5 cool cool yeah i'll, I'll knock off the to... 0.5 because of the scabbard <laughs> yeah <laughs> we're just scabbard the dodgy scabbard that comes off <laughs> Yeah, and I guess the elephant in the room now, as you mentioned, with, with the paint and, and the kind of quality control here. So mm -hmm. what would you rate for the kind of paint job that they gave her? Um, again, I love the colors and the shadings, but there were some quality control issues. So I would have to knock her down sure. to maybe a four. Mm, makes sense. Makes sense to me. 
Yeah, I now that I've noticed, I would have given her like a a four point five, but mm -hmm. the the defects that I just literally noticed today, I'd be tempted to say, I will give it a four because of the shading effort that you put in here. So sometimes they can get really lazy and just put really bland, you know, single or monotone colors. But they've actually made an effort to put some highlighting in here. So I think yeah. I think four just a little nice details is, too with like the trim mm, and everything. Yes. Yes, I, know, I see what you mean, yeah. And the choker, the choker is quite nice mm -hmm. as well. And I'm, I don't know about you, but I'm always really scared with gold paint because gold paint has notorious leakage kind of issues, historically. I didn't know this. So something I guess I need to be wary of now. <laughs> but I, I can understand how, yeah. Yeah, any any figure with gold in and around the skin color area. I'm gonna. I'll show you a picture later uh, when I find that figure. But this um this girl with a cat bell kind of thing. My goodness, her whole chest is now gold. Oh it's my god! It's kind of leaked throughout the years. <laughs> 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 yeah, unfortunate. Huh, unfortunate. Anyway. Maybe that maybe has to do with the quality of the paint. Maybe they've improved it over the years. But yeah, that's fingers that's crossed. Bad. Fingers crossed. Cause that's such a shame. Gold really like stand out, isn't it? It's really nice to look at. So. Mm -hmm. Hopefully they have um, Im improved the, the quality of the gold paint. So as an overall rating for Lynn, where are we going here then? Out of five, all things considered. I guess that's an average 4.5. Yeah, it's about. a stunning, stunning figure, isn't it? Yeah. Mm. I was really yeah. happy. She was my first Fire Emblem figure. So. That's correct. Yeah, no, Dad, I think about it. When I looked at your videos, she was, wasn't she? She yeah. was the first figure of the Fire Emblem range. Sentimental value bumps her through the roof. 4.5 i'll go over that i'll go over that. especially because of value for money right she was cheap and really the cheap. quality you get for the cheapness yeah, yeah i just <laughs> produced so many of her I and mean, it's too bad i guess maybe not enough people picked her up or i don't know if it's because of the quality control issues but that's an interesting one isn't it i i would i would assume that they have too much quantity on their hands here and probably that um yeah, when they saw, saw the kind of range and, and the figure and the popularity, they thought Lynch is going to sell like hotcakes, so they probably mass produced it, I reckon. Probably. I, also, I think th these were supposed to, I think, go with um, Fire Emblem Engage coming out and mm. introducing all the, you know, the heroes from the past. So I feel like they oh, delayed sure. that game a year. It was supposed to come yeah. out, I, I think, for their anniversary um, for Fire yes. Emblem. And so the timing was probably a little off for people to get hyped for buying fi Fire Emblem figures again was my guess sure. too yeah no that makes sense to me that makes sense to me and i reckon they they've kind of um botched the release a little bit of engage because when free houses came up it was a kind of really exciting and what have we got here we've got three different heroes three different kind of pathways kind of school university kind of theme and then did you remember when engage got announced they had that big controversy about ketchup and mayonnaise and all the hair and all that the colgate <laughs> toothpaste in the colgate, Pepsi yeah. can yeah <laughs> People were, were um, I know when the leaks happened, everyone was like, no, they, these can't be real. <laughs> How could they have turned Fire Ellen to VTubers? <laughs> yeah, no, that, that was so funny. That was so was funny. funny. I, I thought they um, were going to release another Fire Emblem Heroes, another kind of um, gacha, gacha game on a mobile, but it's a full mainline game. <laughs> yeah. Did you get a chance to play that one? Yes, I've started. I've literally just started Engage okay. um, last week, so I'm, b I'm about maybe five, six hours into it at the moment. Um, okay. Trying to get through the backlog. How how far have you gotten it? Have you completed it? Or? Yeah, I I uh, got it day one and um, played through it pretty quickly. <laughs> um, mm. Story wise, I was a little disappointed, especially following mm. uh, Three Houses. But I love the return sure. to combat. The combat's so fun. Yeah, it's true. It's true. And Turn all the new characters are fun too. Even though they were a little over the top, you know. <laughs> yeah, to yeah, I, I, I would agree. But it was fun. What would you say is the strongest point and the weakest point of of Fire Emblem Engage? Definitely, the strongest is the combat, um, and the weakest mm. is the lackluster story, and especially in the beginning. Mm. So you're you're probably in the beginning stages where the story's not that good, and the characters are a little <laughs> yeah, bit it's too a little bit slow, <laughs> a little bit much. <laughs> yeah, the first few characters yeah, yeah. that they they introduce. They're, I think, a little over the top. They, they didn't end up in my final party. <laughs> okay. That's what I'll say. <laughs> <laughs> so good things to come then for character development. Yeah. <laughs> okay, fingers crossed, fingers crossed. Just, like, literally. Uh, Go for it. Uh, get through it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, grind. <laughs> yeah, so which game are you playing like literally right now? What is on in your consoles at the moment? 
Ah, right now I've been kind of juggling a lot of things. I'm still not very far in Tears of the Kingdom. Mm. I kind of put it down so that I could focus on um, trails. I wanted to replay some of those um, sure. Cold Steel entries before Reverie comes out next month. And okay. I'm definitely not going to be able to replay everything <laughs> before that comes out. Yeah. But they're long games. Make yeah, they are long games. That's what I've been uh, holding off on to because I'm, fingers crossed, building building the house next year. It's one of those things you just want your own quiet place, sit down and get through the trail series. So I haven't even started one yet. My mate, the uh, Kaseki Nut, he, he loves them as well and he's <laughs> telling me all the time to play them. But uh, for that rainy day, I'm going to have to marathon the whole thing because there's so many of them. <laughs> I do recommend in intervals. You can get burned out intervals. quite easily. <laughs> ah, so you might want to maybe do a marathon for each arc. That's, that's my recommendation. Okay. And have a yeah, little gap a good in, in between each arc. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I do get easily addicted. So, I mean, if I was to play uh, it if, and I'm hooked on it. that's the case, then, yeah. Full steam. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll have to see. <laughs> <laughs> for sure, for sure. Next, uh, next figure we got on here. So, I actually... Um, don't have the Ike with me, but you have the, the Ike, right, with the with the giant cape, so... Yeah, I can hold him up. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, go for it, go yeah, for it, that'd um, be great. Hold on, I kind of... Sorry, I probably should have muted that before doing that, um, but... Here no, it's all good. Our boy Ike, Radiant Eva, love it. <laughs> and his little... Uh, yeah, excellent. ...thing that we were talking about earlier. <laughs> that's it, that's it, the side prompt, yeah. He's he's hench. He's proper proper buff. <laughs> yeah, he's definitely channeling his him bonus. Yes, okay. yes, I like that. I like that a lot. Ah, Ike. I realize now that you bought Ike, but you don't have the Marth. So what was the buying decision between Ike and Marth? Uh, so Ike came first, and I noticed that the Fire Emblem figures were starting to kind of tank on the aftermarket. So. After I got him um, yes. discounted on Ami Ami, I, yeah, I think I bought him used, and he was like, mm. sure, like fifty dollars cheaper, like almost right after release. <laughs> mm. um, I think I waited like two weeks, yeah. and that happened. Um, and so I figured um, maybe <laughs> I should just wait to see what happens with Marth, and I still just haven't bought him yet because he's still yes. pretty easily attainable. <laughs> but I'm gonna have to pull the trigger, I think, yep. sometime soon. Because I do want him. That's true. I want that is very, very true. I hear he's Yeah, yeah, really you're nice. going to get him. Yeah. <laughs> oh, who am I thinking of? Yes, the one that I missed out on. So, Camilla. When I first came to Miyazaki, oh. I saw the purple-haired Camilla statue, and it was like, bargain. It must have been like 21,000 yen. And I didn't oh, realize gosh. at the time that she was really sought after and really rare. She disappeared, and I've never seen her since available for less than like 50 or 60,000. Yeah, on Ami Ami, I think I was looking at their um, their uh, pre um, pre owned one page. She was like over a thousand dollars. It was ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. And I think she was damaged. I was like a thousand dollars, and she was damaged. Oof. We need a re release, don't we? <laughs> I think she has the best chance of getting released because she was part of the DLC and Engage, whereas Cordelia mm. and Tharja weren't, you know, included in that. It's true, it's true. And and speaking of, of Cordelia, she is absolute like top tier for me. We'll get on to Cordelia first, but first our boy our boy first, Ike. So yeah, let's talk about Ike. in terms of visual kind of appeal, how how appealing is our a lovely band hero? I think they did great with his um very muscular uh aesthetic <laughs> here and <His> um hench. <laughs> um and I think they have, there's a lot of cool details, like his armor's not perfect. Um, it looks like he's like in the mid battle. Mm. Um, and there's a lot of like yes. worn aspects and um, just mm. his expression here. <laughs> uh, just looks so like earnest, you know, like he's trying to yeah. overcome something. Um, but yeah, he was my first male figure and, oh. or no, did I get Reen before him? I'm forgetting now. He was one of my, he's, him and Rina right now are my <laughs> only male figures. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah. Appealing. Visually, How much okay. would you give him out of five? Um, I guess I will give him between four and 4.5. Because I think there are aspects that they could have mm -hmm. done a bit more. Um, 
just, it's hard to describe. <laughs> um, I don't know. I don't know what yeah, it is about yeah. male figures. Sometimes I feel like they don't try as hard compared to the female figures, at least in my experience, or my very limited That's an experience. Point. Um, though I feel like they did a pretty good job on Ike still. This might be because I actually haven't played Ike's mm. game, whereas I played Lynn's game, so that's why I felt a bit more of attachment to her. Okay. So this might be I my see. bias creeping yeah, in yeah, as makes well. Sense. <laughs> what do you no, think? I, I can <laughs> actually agree, agree with that kind of point because, like, okay. his hench, he looks dirty, not, not in a bad way, as in, like, you know, by design, he's in battle, he's kind of worn, battle-worn yeah. and, and dirty, but just the colours seem a bit muted, a bit kind of dull, it doesn't, it doesn't pop as much as limb, and it may not be his fault. Too. Maybe that's yeah. it. Yeah, I would agree with that. Like, I would agree with that. Um, I think he needed more shading or something. More definition. If he's being, you know, super muscular. I just find, like, on the shelf, he doesn't, like, pop. He doesn't, like, stand yeah. out as much. Do you know what I mean? For sure. Um, all of his armour and his cape, even though it's red, it's very muted. Um, as you mentioned, mm. and a little dusty. So I think that kind of dirty quality, like <laughs> he is in med battle. Um, mm -hmm. I guess he needed like a blood smear or something. <laughs> <laughs> blood smear. <laughs> <laughs> to give him a little bit of pop. I don't know. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, no, I, I, I would agree with most of that sentiment. I, I also <laughs> think as well, like it's kind of hard, hard to really make him like radiant and beautiful because he he's kind of like generic he's like a good guy um trying to follow in his dad's footsteps trying to be nice to everyone he's got his kind of muted kind of colors um there's only so much that you can kind of do with him the, i mean the pose already is dynamic right it's very exciting he's in battle mid swing swaying and everything like that so visually appealing i'll, I'll probably give him like a 3.5 because he's nice he's just not like outside i wouldn't say he's, he's as not nice top as Lynn. Lynn looks, yeah yeah, yeah. Exactly, I, I exactly. do feel like they put more attention to Lynn's pose compared to Ike's, mm. if we're going to do, I guess, comparisons. Um, yeah, yeah. And he does just so. take up so much space. <laughs> yeah, no, you're right, because of that cape. <laughs> yeah, and I do feel so, like, if we're going to talk about maybe likeness to character next, um, mm. from screenshots I've seen of like the GameCube games and um, mm. him and uh, the Wii game, I feel like he's a bit slimmer than he is here. I don't know. Maybe that's... Yeah. I feel like they kind of bulked him up a little bit. I don't know if from the mobile I, game, did, was he bulky? I think that's fair. I think that's <laughs> very fair. This this looks to me like the the variant from the kind of Fire Emblem Heroes where they've made him mm. really bulky and defensive okay. as opposed to the original game, which you're right, he's kind of skinny, isn't it? He's, he's kind a of, little yeah. bit more... He's like for slim and yes, fit in that yes. way. Hmm. Yeah, I can see it now. I can see it for sure. Yeah, so likeliness then. You're going to downrate him for the, the fact that he's hench. <laughs> he's man mode. <laughs> I do like the henchness, but... Yeah, I, I think I'll have to give him a 3.5 for likeness. Okay, and okay. I think his rating expression so doesn't quite scream mm. Ike to me. I don't know. Mm. It's hard to... I guess... Not having played the games, <laughs> it's hard for me yeah, to really yeah. say that. <laughs> but that's just my my feeling right now. Sure, sure. I, I'm I'm going to go along with that line. I'm going to give him a free because, I mean, obviously he is Ike, but they, they could have right, really done something to like capture the features or, or make him kind of stand out uh, away from the you know. Let's forget for a second that he's he is Ike from from Fire Emblem. He's a, he's a protagonist. He just doesn't like. He's not like a he super kind of hero, heroic kind of feeling. Whereas the Marth figure actually does feel kind of elegant. Like I've, I've got the Marth here. He feels kind of like a royal, royal and really kind of, I don't know where it's the color palette again. It's the gold kind of stands out. He's really regal and he kind of feels kind of, like, he almost feels like a Dragon Quest character. He's really yeah. kind of popping and aesthetically kind of pleasing. And even with the cape, the kind of shading and, and the blue, I feel as though the really appealing in terms of character likeness. It's definitely more standout. Uh, mm. And that shield is really stunning too, from what I've seen on uh, yes. unboxing videos. Yes, yes. Um, and his yeah. pose is just more interesting. Like it I is, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> like it's Ike's kind just of kind of standing there, like I'm about to swing, Lara. Well, <laughs> kind of maneuvering something. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. He is. He's really literally maneuvering or swinging a baseball bat or, or something along those lines. He's or just, something. Uh, and and they did keep, I guess, Mars like pretty boy face. Yeah. Whereas I feel yeah. like they could have made Ike a bit more masculine. I don't know if that's the right word mm. I'm looking for. Something a bit more rugged, you know? Sure, sure. I, if they're I would go going with, with the hero's 
you know, uh, I guess, uh, image of him. I, I, again, I'm not totally, I haven't seen all the ciphers and hero yeah. artwork, but that's my ambition. Oh. Speaking of which, um, always as a thank you to my guests for coming on, I definitely um, i am going to send some goodies your way. And since we're on the topic of Fire Emblem, I do have a, a few of the Cypher um, books. I, I need to dig them up. I've got loads and loads of random merch I've collected over, over the years. So stuff like uh, uh, acrylic stands. So we've got Dimitri, Fire Emblem, uh, Free Houses. We've got like these kind of keychains of, of Marth and other heroes from, from Fire Emblem Heroes. Nice little... Uh, Oh, cool. Keychains, little little acrylic stands as well, little display pieces. So much random Fire Emblem merch. I'm going to grab a bunch together and I'll send it to your way as a, a thank you for your time. Oh, that's that's very sweet. Thank you. Yep, we'll add to the growing collection of, of merch and weep goodies. <laughs> oh, we forgot to do overall overall uh, value for, for mm -hmm. kind of uh, Ike. What would you give him as an overall rating? Uh, so he was still in the line of the first few Fire Emblem figures that were pretty mm. well priced, and then he did, uh, I guess, tank in the aftermarket. Sure. I don't know what his current price is. If he is still kind of easily obtainable, I want to say he is. I think so. I think he's around sixteen, seventeen thousand yen last time I saw. Yeah. So it's not too bad. So I think that's a really good price, especially with figure prices nowadays. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, if you're, um, I guess, buying internationally, the the yen has also. Been very oh, yeah. with the exchange rates. <laughs> I'm loving that exchange rate. Um, My goodness. The only issue how, is how... he was heavy, very um, large to ship. His box is huge. Okay. So yes. that is uh, something to watch out for <laughs> if true. for people trying to import him. Very, very true. Um, but I guess one one good girl that is very um, uh, obtain unobtainable nowadays, but very uh, pleasing on the eye is is our lovely Cordelia. So. Tiamo, Tiamo, right? <laughs> yep, yep. We have a little uh, boob armor here. <laughs> yes, I just so tell love me, tell how me. relaxed she is. Like she's getting ready for battle and it's very, I don't know, oh. I feel like it's very intimate how they captured her here with her armor off and her kind of getting ready to like, I don't know if she's stretching with that, <laughs> that sphere or what she's doing. It's, oh, it's but... very... Um... I would class this probably in my top five figures of, of all time because there's so many intricate little details here. So even starting from the ground up, mm. that water, that kind of illusionary, you know, subtle step, this kind of thin, skinny warrior of the skies. They've just done so much to really make. I love this little winglet uh, ear pieces here as well. That is so, so yeah. cute. See, and this is re it's really sharp. She's actually a really, really sharp figure. I know. I accidentally bump into her all the time on my shelf. <laughs> <laughs> I film in front of that where I have her. <laughs> mm. she's, she's, she's sharp. Like, I love her hair too. I just thought red is so stunning yeah. and how they sculpted that. All the shading. It's, I completely agree. And this is one of my favorite parts as well. This, this kind of finger, mm. the way she kind of caresses her a hair and a spear. I've probably not got it in the right place or the spears is Yeah, you gotta wonky, fit it in but... there. I, it took me a while to figure out how to <laughs> get it in there correctly. To slot it in, yeah. But the fact that yeah. it's it's very, very subtle the way the way she's kind of holding that and curls, all yeah. the, the details and the kind of gauntlets and, and the armor, they've really gone all out with this figure. Yeah, I I did notice that her armor's not as detailed as maybe the more recent Fire Emblem oh, figures. Yeah, yeah. But I think it still mm -hmm. works really nice well, especially with how they did the stone wing, the Pegasus wing. Mm. Um, it's just very, I think, natural. Yes, yes, and um, a I lot do of love her feet I've... in the water. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah, some merch, she right? Has, yeah, those like stirrup leggings, like it's very much like a rider <laughs> legging that she has in her. Um, oh, these uh, the yeah, boots. Yeah. yeah, I just love that detail too. And this kind of leather aesthetic as well that that kind of clasps <laughs> onto her her kind yeah, of short yeah. shorts. Yeah. <laughs> admiring my my own figure from from close up you get a whole new appreciation again you fall in love all over again with um the original feelings when you first unboxed it right yeah yeah i think it's good to always maybe i don't know i feel like i admire all my figures when i do my dusting routine because i get <laughs> right up in there <laughs> <laughs> I like so every that. like two weeks when i have my dusty routine I, I get a new appreciation of my figures <laughs> deep in there dusting and cleaning them out and seeing them up close exactly. <laughs> I love the purity of that. Yeah, I need to de-dust as well. I'm I'm so scared to de-dust because literally, um, 
my man cave is like dust heaven. I've got things all over the place. <laughs> I'm going to need like a, a full week or something. <laughs> yeah, that's a Cordelia then. So let's start with um, visually appealing. So what would you say for our, our lovely Tiamo Cordelia? Very biased. She's a five. She's a, she's a five. <laughs> are, are we, is this a quick one? Is it fives all around or is there any flaw that you can notice? I want to say it's a flaw. I do wish the plastic on the water was a little bit more see-through or something, or maybe a blue okay. tint, but that's about mm. it. Um, and I did mention mm. how her armor, well, the, the gauntlets aren't as, I think, detailed as maybe okay, the more recent figures, but I still think it works. Like, I still like it a lot. <laughs> yeah. And it's very yeah. true to how she looked in her character por uh, portraits in Awakening, which I appreciate. Yes. I'll go with that. I'll go with that. Interesting point about the water, actually. If I could like touch it up with really kind of mellow light blue shades or something to really make it pop, that might look really, really cool. But I'm scared to do anything to damage yeah. the figure. <laughs> Especially for an expensive one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. How much did you pay for yours? I was kind of lucky. I got her around. Well, I don't want to say lucky because it was still more than, you know, MSRP. But yeah. I think she came out to you around like 300 to 350 after everything. Mm. including That's shipping. good. That's a good price. I know. It was really good. I was like, wow, I I'm hopping on this. <laughs> Yeah. I, I kind of went on a whim, just like, okay, let's see what she looks like on Mercari. <laughs> and then, yeah. Yeah, that is a really good price because she's not even that available. So to get her yeah. a, a good price, I'm I'm very impressed. It's you, hard to find for under five hundred, I think. Or yeah, mm. after think shipping so, and everything. I, I will give her fives across the board because as I said, she's <laughs> she's one of my favorite figures and it's very hard for me, unless I'm being very pernickety, to find like a flaw or something that I'm unhappy with. So I would say visually appealing, character likeliness, sculpt job, paint job, you could argue 4.5 for certain areas, but even then I'm still really happy with the paint job, especially the hair. Okay. The hair is, for hair me, is, is stunning. I think the hair is the best part <laughs> mm, mm. Um, for the paint, yeah. She's a five. She's a five. She's just a five. <laughs> Excellent. And then we ha you have one that I have yet to open. So I've actually got my Byleth right here. Still still in my box. So okay. you're going to have to tell me all about it. all about this uh, lovely Byleth. Okay, let me... Here she is. Yes, uh, a lovely teacher from Free Houses. So yeah, tell tell me all about her. Did you did you choose her in your in your gameplay walkthrough, or did you choose the male? Yeah, she was uh, my first uh, in the playthrough. Good, good. I haven't done all the routes yet. I, I feel okay. kind of bad, <laughs> as, even as a big Fire Emblem fan. Uh, going through all three routes and the early stages again. Yeah, was a lot. <laughs> yeah yeah exactly i've only done claude's claude's um generic golden kind of deer. route so i need yeah. to go back yeah yeah, yeah. golden deer was my first route and i still need oh, to do the choice. dlc i have the dlc i just haven't done the fourth route <laughs> same as same as and i've got an excuse though because after i completed his route i lent the game cartridge to my niece and i think she lost it so i need to find oh, it no. <laughs> i need to find it in the house <laughs> well that might be a blessing disguise i don't know if you are aware of the nintendo switch cart revisions Oh, so oh, after so the, when you get a game day one, you have the hmm. launch edition, and so on the yeah. back of the cart, it's going to have um, this number code, and it ends with a zero. Okay. So this is going to be the unpatched cart. But when Nintendo was like um, reprinting all these games from their, yeah. um, you know, their IPs, they revised the cart um, so that it incorporates the patches. So I oh. um, I could show you. Um, a spreadsheet of all the different uh, Switch game carts and what the latest patch revisions are. And yeah. I think Fire Emblem, I still need to buy, yeah, one of the revised ones because I still have the um, the collector's edition, which came with the launch edition. Oh. Um, so. so, yeah, That'd it's a really blessing good. disguise because if you ever, for some reason, Nintendo decides to get rid of the Switch eShop, um, mm. you don't have to download the patches. It's right on your game cart. Oh. So. Very cool, very yeah. cool. Now you learn a new thing every day. <laughs> Appreciate it, Emily. Thank you for mm -hmm. thank. You. Yeah, that's it's kind of unique to the Switch. Um, you see yeah. th this with like, for example, PlayStation. They do their greatest hits revisions. Mm. So, but that's a brand new disc and a new, new release. But Nintendo does it kind of silently with their revised carts. 
Oh, yeah, that is definitely USP because the, the popularity of the Switch, I'm not surprised. It seems to be getting stronger and stronger with the kind of RPG game catalog coming out on it, the portability, the power of it. It's going from strength to strength. On the on the Byla figure then, so what would you rate it before I get excited and open my one up um, on a big reveal? How would you rate your, your Byla figure? Overall, um, I would give her a 4.5. I like her a lot. Um, I think she's, I love the Sword of the Creator Flame Sword. Yes. It's, it's so nice. And she has the extra option too of the other, the regular Sword of the Creator. Um, mm. But I like displaying her with the orange. Um, it's a really nice contrast to her blue hair. It's yes. not as vivid as the promotional photos, but I still really like mm. it. Um, and with her eyes, um, and I like the detail with um, her leggings, the cutouts. Oh yeah, yeah, the tights. So that was, I thought, really nice, you know, with the tights. And um, she does have a lot of black in the back, but it, I think there's nice mm. shading to give some variation that comes across well on the camera or webcam here. <laughs> Yeah, no, no, I can see it. It does look very impressive. Like I was mm -hmm. in love with the kind of uh, initial prototype and the design for that. And then when they released her, I heard that sometimes um, the quality control, some people got a good batch and some people didn't get a great one. Would you say that you oh. won the lucky ones? I guess I was a lucky one. Yeah, I don't have any complaints with really anything. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, That's very promising. Yeah, I, I'll have to look up some unboxings to see what others were saying. <laughs> Fingers um, crossed for my one. I was exactly. I was planning to do uh, my unboxing, like literally on, on this show. Oh. In terms of game figures, there's so many new ones and old ones combined. Like, did you ever play the Sakura Wars, Sakura Tyson? Um, I don't have this. I have a the PS4 Sakura Wars, but I haven't yeah. played them with the mechs and stuff. So this, this might be one that you might want to consider getting because I love oh. the kind of oriental, kind of Japanese, kind of kimono kind of thing. She looks really like beautiful in terms of a color palette and she's quite affordable. Nice so and flowy too. Expensive. Yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> so she's, she's a really, really nice one. And then on the um, Tales of series, mm. I quite like this uh, kind of badass. I haven't actually played the game yet, but have you played this one? Tales of No, Zero? I haven't played the series yet, um, but yeah, Velvet always looked like a cool character. She looked really, really badass, and I thought like Kotobukiya, its quality's got to be fairly decent. Um, yeah, the yeah. box is a bit mashed up, but that's actually my favourite type of figure, where the figure itself is really like it's good rank, good quality, but the box is damaged, and they just cut, you know, cut the price. Uh, yeah. yeah, makes it cheap. <laughs> uh, do you keep the boxes, by the way? I do for moving purposes. Okay. So yeah, my closets and uh, the storage under in my kitchen cabinets are very full. <laughs> with my very like I, I don't think i have that many figures it, it's grown quite a bit this past year but we're mm. all adding up <laughs> i've seen your wish list it's gonna it's gonna grow it's gonna continue yeah, to grow surely that's true <laughs> and this one this one is an actually uh, an actual grail a holy grail that i picked up quite a while ago but i've never opened so um i know taylor the gaming shelf will be absolutely envious green with any of this one but uh it's the arabian um Risa from persona Persona, maybe this, this image is better. Ah. Uh, Persona 4. Oh, she so looks awesome. She is highly, highly sought after. And I think now oh. the cheapest you're going to find her for is about 70,000 70, yen. So oh, quite, wow. That's quite steep. pricey. Yeah. <laughs> but just uh, in terms of kind of like an aesthetic, I don't, I haven't seen many characters that kind of have this kind of Arabian kind of, um, kind of sassy purple kind of satin very reflective I, I can appreciate on the camera <laughs> but it's... yeah i haven't played that persona game yet either so i'm curious how that relates to the game but i guess it's is that the dancing all night version or something or yes yes it is yes oh, okay. persona That's 4 cool. dancing all night arabian armor she looks bigger than a 1 8 scale but it says here 1 8 scale so quite uh quite surprised she should look yeah great out of the box yeah fingers crossed fingers crossed at the rpg um gaming unboxing maybe maybe we should uh, jump on and, and do the live unboxing of some of these i'd be really keen to hear <laughs> your opinion on first impressions that'd be quite fun that, that sounds fun indeed and like when when i come back and to join next time i've actually got some um fire emblem war scrolls as well have you collected any war scroll tapestries yet the only i guess cloth posters i've received were in the collector's edition games yeah yeah but i haven't done the wall scroll scrolls yet I need to uh, start you off in your journey. I'm going to send you a, a war scroll, some RPG war scrolls as well, um, to kick you off in your journey because I've literally, I've got war scroll coming out of my backside at the moment. I've stacks and stacks of boxes of war scrolls. So 
feel free to, to enjoy. I'm going to show you some on the Discord and you let me know which one you like and I'll, I'll send it your way as well. Okay, that's great. Thanks. Yeah, I'll jump on Discord. I will let you know uh, the next few available dates and then yeah, we'll just carry on. Yeah, yeah, we could do this again. Yeah. Cool, cool. Nice one. Much appreciated, Emily. Take care. No worries. Speak Take care. Soon. Bye. Bye-bye. Hey everyone, I hope you enjoyed that video. I had such a great time talking to Emily. We shot not one, but two more episodes coming very soon. We talked about her YouTube career, her journey, her background, but also her love of K-pop. She's got massive K-pop collections. She knows more than me. <laughs> oh, absolutely epic. No, I love Emily. And speaking of great people, the Kaseki Nut joined me in the Miyazaki Man podcast coming very, very soon. And also, I went on a trip to Tokyo with AI Girl, who showed me Nintendo official store in Tokyo and Joy Polis Indoor Virtual Reality Park. And if you enjoyed this episode, in all likelihood, you'll enjoy the episode I shot with Miss Bubbles as well. She is an absolutely amazing gaming girl. Great, great Miyazaki Man podcast, that one. Check it out in the link here. Special thanks to all the patrons, Ultimate Schools, Igor Gaming, Gaming Shelf, Tendai, Captain Hazmas, Kalua, David Vince, Rondi, Sophia P, Insufficient Yogurt, Mark C, James Y, Cobin, Trey T, Don P, Alex M, Ash W, and Suntan Superman. The next could be you. Thank you especially to the New End Show, the latest patron supporter. By the way, I've got my dropshipping service all the way to you, to your door. Anything you want on Mercari Yahoo auctions, even live. I can find the grails for you, discuss a negotiated discounted price on all the Mercari salespeople. If you want anything from Japan, get in touch. It's my own little proxy service. Peace.